Okay, I'm time ready. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, first, uh, I wish to congratulate and thank Berjaya University College, uh, the presenter of today's event, and the co-organizer Pata Malaysia chapter for inviting me to be uh, one of the speakers for the uh, two-day uh, virtual event. Um, we we'll, we are going to talk about the new experience of uh, sacred vows and eternal romance. Huh? Uh, I guess to simply put it, we uh, we will be talking about you know the holding of wedding events, um, uh, planning for uh, honeymoon, anniversary trips, and things like that. Um, so uh, to move on from here, uh, I would first like to share uh, of the industry new norms and good practices, you know, um, and how this all came about, and then uh, we just move on to. Uh, sharing some thoughts on how to boost confidence uh, of these uh, newlyweds uh, to hold events and plan for honeymoon uh, or, or the anniversary domestically uh, with the do's and don'ts. And uh, in the last part, we just uh, uh, touch on uh, how on promoting some of these uh, niche products. So this will be uh, basically the topics or the areas that we are going to cover, I'm going to cover today. And okay, coming back to the new norms, huh, is a very big word. The new norms is a very big word. So uh, what actually happened and how this, this new norm come about? Uh, basically, uh, I'd just like to go back a little bit on history, if you don't mind. Most of you wish already known, but just to recall uh, the, the line of things that happened. So um, uh, we all know uh, we are in this COVID uh, pandemic situation. It all first started in Malaysia. Uh, when uh, early February uh, 2020, there was the first Malaysian that was tested positive. And then as days pass by, the number begins to increase. And, the, and due to that, uh, the first uh, movement control order or the MCO was implemented on uh, early or 18th of March, uh, or which subsequently was extended to end of May. So that was the three months period. Uh, after which uh, things were not really improving and then Malaysia moved on to the next stage. And we had our first uh, full movement control order uh, starting from June 2020. Um, later on, our government decided to change it, you know, to rename it. And subsequently, uh, we renamed it as the uh, National Recovery Plan. And we are supposed to have four phases of it, phase one, two, three, four. Uh, working, was, working from home was the norm. All events and travelings were cancelled. You know, everything was in this array. Uh, businesses had to close, people... Uh, start living uh, in, uh, in anxiety as to, you know, how things are going to happen, are going to be, and, you know, uh, people are losing their jobs. Um, like I said again, many events were actually cancelled, hotels, airlines, ticket, uh, travel services, and uh, many could not even uh, get any refund uh, of the money that they have paid. And... Uh, Along the way, some company really couldn't survive and had to close. And so uh, it was really a big relief, a uh, big relief when uh, finally um, the country moved from phase one, two, three, and uh, we are now in the national recovery uh, phase four, and uh, which uh, started uh, September this year. Uh, the first phase started September, and now as we move into October, more and more states uh, begin to you know, interstate travel was uh, allowed, uh, events were allowed to be held and uh, slowly but surely uh, the market is now moving uh, back to uh, uh, a little bit uh, into the right track and um, we can see all these um, events, holidaymakers uh, making, uh, uh, taking their revenge uh, by all coming out and uh, but uh, this is good news uh, since uh, the government uh, decided to go to phase four because uh, they say that you know uh, we will do that when 80 percent of the population is uh, uh, vaccinated and to date uh, we are hearing that we are around 97 uh, percent of the population is vaccinated and uh, more than 75 percent uh, of the adult uh, population is also vaccinated so moving on um, i would like to just now to tell you uh, talking about events uh, which is one of the topics that we want to cover. Um, what are the new norms of the uh, uh, of the new norms? So uh, most of you who have uh, attended events may uh, be aware of this, but I would still like to run through uh, things. Uh, okay, 
for all events, you know, uh, a special uh, QR code uh, have to be uh, designed and for participants to scan to register or check in themselves. <coughs> On top of that, uh, all participants uh, have to ensure that they are fully vaccinated, you know, they carry low risk symptoms and then uh, body temperatures, uh, meters are placed at the entrances and or everyone has to uh, make sure that they not read any uh, have any sign of fever, which means that their body temperature <coughs> is supposed to be below thirty. Excuse me. <coughs> okay, uh, it became a norm that you know sanitizer, uh, send sanitizer, uh, sanitizers are placed uh, at entry points, um, and then you know. Um, Wearing a mask uh, has become uh, a feature that uh, we are so accus accustomed with now. You know, uh, you don't only bring your wallet out, but you make sure you bring your mask out. Okay, uh, <clears throat> and then there it goes about <coughs> the practice of uh, social distancing. Um, as far as events are concerned, uh, which means uh, which when we translate this, we are talking about, you know, um, you have to ensure that, you know, the sitting, especially for when you're having events like a wedding or or you do engagement parties or this uh, sitting arrangement on the table, uh, everyone uh, have to be like, they sit a meter apart, okay? Uh, anyone, the person to your left, to your right, you have to be sitting a meter apart. Or uh, sometimes they sit uh, as a benchmark, you just put up your arm, you know, is this an arm, one arm left? then let's consider like a meter apart. Lah. So due to this uh, seating arrangement, uh, which is a very major thing, why? Uh, because uh, traditional, like uh, whether you're sitting on a five feet table or five and a half feet banquet table, you can you put, you will tend to put like 10 persons on the table. But because of this social uh, practice of lady, you know, a meter apart or an arm's length apart, now you find that you know, the same table can probably sit a maximum six to seven people. So, which means that, you know, uh, you have uh, deducted your seating capacity by 30%. So, if you, uh, if you need to invite people, uh, generally, uh, more tables are required and so you, more space is required. And uh, this is when, uh, as, a, as a, a venue provider, they will, they will be charging you higher because why? You are taking up most of their space, huh? So this is one uh, one very direct high impact. Uh, uh, and then uh, we're talking about um, further moving on, wearing of gloves, staff and guests. Okay, uh, generally all staff serving need to wear gloves, you know. And in the event, if it's, a, if it's a, like say, you have a buffet style where it's self-service, then uh, even your guests have to wear gloves because why? They have to take food, uh, on their own, uh, I mean, uh, the portioning. So even your guests now have to be accustomed to wearing gloves. So uh, of course, uh, after you check in, you don't forget to check out because uh, otherwise your master jatra will keep recording as you are still checking in. So uh, if the next occupant come and somebody has uh, has so called uh, has a reading in master jatra as a uh, COVID, you know. And then you will automatically, your my will be upgraded to become close contact. Uh, so these, these are new things, uh, new norms that, you know, uh, uh, talking about those who want to organize, uh, you know, uh, wedding events or banquets uh, uh, for, for, for themselves. Uh, they have to remind their guests about all this uh, uh, Ministry of Health Safety Protocol uh, uh, that you have to remind them, hey, please uh, make sure uh, you, 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 you carry your mycetra with you. Uh, make sure your status is uh, fully vaccinated, low risk, you know. Uh, uh, you can do your own body temperature, make sure you are, you are not running any fever, you know. Uh, and don't forget to bring your mask. Uh, beside the ang pao, uh, you have to bring along. Uh, uh. So uh, this, these are new, new things that, uh, you know, uh, those who wants to organize uh, events uh, have to uh, do all these things. And of course, uh, uh, the way uh, the table set up, uh, 
sometimes you have to also uh, remind your guests lah. Uh, this is uh, find this thing something it's good it's something in time those you are invite inviting to ensure that all this uh, they have uh, complied with all this so uh, that is uh, as far as we are talking about the uh, events uh, uh, having events uh, these are all the new norms of it um and uh, on top of that uh, just let me just move on to talking on the travel aspect uh, where you're talking about oh you want to have a uh, inter uh, what? E eternal romance uh, you know so you you want to plan and have you know a lot of private moments together you know whether be it a trip be it, a, be it just a, a, a stay an experience or going somewhere that as a couple you have always dreamt to be together alone so these are again some of the uh, safety protocols that uh, uh, the new norm that you have to remember that uh, of course uh, both the couple you uh, have your my or either that or those who don't have carry a phone or maybe you're worried that if you go into certain places there is no wi-fi and you can't uh, show your my then uh, please uh, bring your vaccination card uh, uh, as, a, as a backup uh, in case. Uh, um, and then uh, similarly, uh, before you depart, ensure that your personal reading is fully, uh, of course, fully vaccinated, you will know. But uh, COVID low risk, uh, low symptom status reading is something uh, very, very hard to say because sometimes you just so happen to go somewhere and, and somebody in that place uh, has a positive reading and your status will change and once your status change uh, you will have a challenge in trying to uh, enter lah, uh, wherever you are supposed to be going lah. Uh, similarly even you want to enter uh, a banquet function uh, uh, the people uh, monitoring in the front uh, they will not allow you to enter <laughs> if all of a sudden your low risk no symptom reading uh, change to something else or maybe sometimes uh, I have seen cases before uh, the uh, the wedding couple they will ask uh, the guests to take a test you know on the spot you know to show that you know uh, they are negative lah uh, before they allow them to uh, join uh, join the event. So um, okay, um, you make sure you are not having any fever, okay, and make sure you bring a lot of masks you know and to wear in public areas anywhere that you're in public areas uh, make sure you have sufficient masks with you um, of course uh, when you are anywhere in any public places uh, uh, follow and abide by the rules uh, uh, whether you go to a fine dining restaurant eventually or a restaurant or a place of uh, uh, interest that you're visiting uh, be conscientious and uh, practice all these social distancing uh, uh, SOPs uh, or protocol uh. Of course, uh, never forget to check in and out lah, with your my suggestor again. Otherwise, uh, it will create a false reading that you're still in uh, a certain place when you already have moved out from that. Um, okay, uh, lockdowns. Okay, so uh, just now, like I was saying again, uh, just basically, uh, I want to say that uh, one, one, one of the new norm now is, you know, at the back of our mind also, please be wary about, you know, uh, 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 lockdown or, or now we don't call it lockdown anymore because uh, um, after the after uh, running through when you said like I said just now uh, you get in in early March yeah, uh, when the first case we had our first uh, movement control order and then subsequently we move it to the uh, full move, movement control order where the whole nation was locked down only essential services people uh, you only go out to buy groceries and nobody allowed to get out of the house uh, of which then they uh, they reduce, uh, they simplify and ease the SOP, and then they rename it as the National Recovery, uh, which uh, commenced in June. And uh, like I said, uh, Negeri Sembilan was one among the first lah uh, for to to be go under phase four, which means that interstate travel is allowed. Uh, and subsequently, when Klang Valley uh, and Malacca move into phase four in October the following month. And then uh, until now, until today, only Kelantan and Sarawak is still in phase three uh, as of today. Lah. 
Um, so the rest, everybody has uh, moved to phase four. So everything is allowed. Events are allowed to be held. People are allowed to travel uh, freely, you know. But you have to follow the SOPs. Uh, huh? Okay. Now, uh, coming talk about uh, I, uh, boosting confidence for events and travel. I, I will I will move this aside first, but uh, I like to show you some slide earlier on uh, to say what I meant. Uh, of course, uh, boosting confidence. The first thing you have to do is, of course, uh, you build the confidence of the user. Lah. So I will share with you some pictures, uh, some thoughts lah, as to which area and how, uh, if you are a venue provider, uh, if you are a travel agent, you know, service provider, or you, in fact, if you are the uh, attraction places of attraction, uh, how are you going to boost the confidence of people to come and uh, utilize your facilities or your services? Um, of course, uh, main thing, uh, I would say that ensuring compliance of uh, MOH SOP is uh, very, very important, uh, which uh, slowly uh, the public is uh, getting more aware and uh, more well educated uh, as to what are the SOPs. Uh. Even though off and on there are some uh, unclear, uh, certain certain the clarity of certain uh, certain um, terms that they use uh, are still a bit uh, confusing. But uh, slowly but surely, uh, things are getting to become clearer. Uh, and um, of course, uh, just beside, I would say that to build, to boost confidence uh, for people, uh, for events and uh, and travel, uh, they need maybe also to think of how to go beyond MOH SOP safety measures. Uh, uh. And of course, a uh, very important thing is that uh, when you're doing all these things, you know, uh, best if you share your company's uh, uh, health and safety protocols, uh, uh, to your guests, or uh, you know, uh, to ensure their interest uh, is of utmost importance to you at all times. Uh. So all these things, uh, because nowadays uh, people over when the lockdown, everybody uh, is uh, has got into the habit of uh, uh, googling here and there. You know, so now uh, before anybody starts any journey or plan anything, uh, they will do a lot more research than what they used to do in the past. Of course, in the past, they also do, but I can think now they do much more, much more than what they do in the past. So if you post all your uh, company's uh, uh, safety protocol that your practices, uh, when uh, the end user actually goes into and, and found you uh, in, in their search, at least uh, they can read and see that uh, you are very actively uh, uh, participating or implementing all this uh, MOH uh, safety protocol and they feel that will uh, give them uh, more confidence uh, to use your services uh, we service uh, another another service provider uh. so i'm going to show you a series of picture um, i've said a lot of things but uh, i'd like to share with you some pictures uh, which will correlate back to what i have said earlier so uh, in this sense that uh, then you can uh, put a picture to what I've said earlier. <laughs> okay, so uh, moving on, I will uh, start to share the first uh, protocol. This is for events. Uh, this is for events. Uh, earlier, I was saying that no, uh, no, as the main feature, uh, no, you need to have a, temp you need to have a, what they call that? You need to have a safety uh, QR code. You need to have a temperature reader. You need to have a sanitizer. This is uh, uh, at the main entrance when people come in for uh, registration. So uh, every guest that come in, first they have to scan, they have to uh, read the temperature. I will show you more pictures. Okay, like for example, uh, this is uh, this is a temperature reader. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, one of the very modern ones uh, uh, that you read and what uh, you see, you capture your face and everything you're reading. And they will store your picture to the cloud, you know, so you can recall it out anytime you want uh, in the future. So uh, once they scan you, they read you. Of course, you have to make sure that your reading is normal, uh, uh, 36.5, you are below 38, uh, so you are considered uh, normal. Okay. Uh, once you uh, somebody will be standing there to ensure this is what your reading is, 
uh, subsequently, uh, like I said, uh, then you scan, uh, you scan the QR code that's uh, above, that's also provided. Like what I said, you scan it, and then, um, okay, for those who don't have uh, a mice adjustment or your battery run out of, uh, your, your handphone run out of battery, then you have to record your name physically, uh, of which, uh, okay, in most cases, uh, they put a sign there to remind you, please practice social distancing, uh, uh, especially with people that you are not family members. Uh, then uh, they have to provide sanitizers, uh, uh, because uh, everybody will be holding the pen to write, so it's better to sanitize your hand after you write. Lah. Um, uh, just now talking about events, yeah, no longer 10 sitting on the table, so you have to do the uh, one arm length uh, or one meter apart sitting. So a table sitting like this may carry you seven people at most. And you can see uh, even social uh, uh, distancing from table to table, we are talking about two meters apart. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, you, you, what you can see is that the, the, the ballroom is greatly a uh, uh, number of tables uh, able to fit in. Just a, a ceremonial thing uh, without any banquet. Uh, you know, chairs have to be a uh, meter apart and, you know, actually you take up double the space. That's why nowadays anybody uh, planning to use uh, venues uh, for their events, uh, they will find that uh, the cost has gone up. Uh, basically, basically, because uh, the providers are giving you more more space for the same money. You see? So that's why their prices are increased. Um, this is where I'm uh, talking about sharing uh, sanitation and health guidelines for COVID. Uh, uh, um, in terms that, you know, just now I was, earlier I was saying that if your if your organization uh, uh, practices a lot of this uh, MOH uh, safety protocol, it's good to put all these kind of uh, uh, notices in your website uh, as one of the uh, footers, uh, not not footers, as one of the uh, folders uh, that you can put there. You know, like oh, like uh, this our safety protocol. Okay, then people click inside and then they can see lah. Uh, all these things, uh, which is very normal, but it, it kind of remind people that, you know, uh, these are the main thing that you have to do. And uh, these things can also be put at the entrance of your property. So let's say if you are running a travel agency, you put it, you stick it to your entrance, uh, the, the, uh, or just the front of your travel agency to say that, okay, please wear masks, please practice social distancing when you enter, you know. Or if you're running a place of attraction, or you are, you are, or if you're running a resort, or if you're running a hotel, it doesn't matter what business you are in. But uh, this kind of a poster like that is good because it it sort of give confidence uh, to the end user that oh, this guy remembered about wearing masks, practice social distancing, uh, which is very good lah. Uh. So all these things like uh, also same thing lah. Uh, you can put at your entrance, you know. Uh, please show your digital. You are required to show your digital uh, certificate, and then you know uh, all the minimum uh, requirements. If you are in, uh, vaccinated with Johnson or Cancino, you need to do this after receiving the first dose or the two dose. You need uh, Pfizer, AstraZeneca. What you need fourteen days. So and then show a sample. Uh. So uh, uh, it's good because why? When you when you display such things in the front of your your shop or your entrances. Uh, those people who really say that, oh, I think I don't qualify. So some of them, they just uh, walk away lah, uh, or they do a self-check and then they find that, hey, <clears throat> I don't qualify. So some people may try, uh, try their luck, but uh, uh, as as the service provider, you have to be very alert lah, to ensure that, you know why, these people who are uh, not in the low risk uh, reading don't uh, affect your other guests that you have who have a low risk reading so uh, implementing this means uh, you need more manpower but uh, there is no two way about it lah. you have to implement it lah. so uh, see uh, like this type of signage you put in front of your entrance say, please stop for reading uh, so then they have to stop then your staff will do all this reading and all this stuff lah. so uh, uh, when you have a visual uh, language don't really become a barrier no you know because uh, we are multiracial uh, so uh, some English, some Bahasa, some Mandarin, some only Mandarin speaking, Kansas speaking, Indian speaking. So, but when you put visual like that, everybody understands. Uh, 
same thing, you know, uh, we tell you tell people that before you come to our place, okay, uh, especially let's say on social media or website, oh, you want to come and dine, okay, please remember, uh, you must be fully vaccinated, blah, blah, blah. So all this kind of thing uh, is, uh, is, is good, la, it's good, it's very good la, uh, to minimize all this um, uh, commotion. La, uh, when people come in front of your entrance, they say, oh, I don't know this, I don't know that. So when you put up a sign like that and people say that, sorry, sir, you can see this is, uh, this is our management uh, in compliance with the Ministry of Health, SOP. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, I cannot allow you to come in. You know, uh, it's not about whether you know or don't know. We have a sign here. So you can read it. So I'm very sorry. Uh, we have to uh, reject you. Lah. So all these things is good. Or you can have a, this is a, this is a summary. Uh, you do a one poster all, all in one. Lah. Sorry, just give me a minute. My battery is running low. I'm going to switch on. Just give me a minute. Lah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, what a boo-boo. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, uh, coming back here, okay, you can also do a, a, a summary one, uh, one, one sheet, uh, one sheet for all purpose, explaining all the SOPs uh, uh, on, on the latest. Uh, you can see that we put up there the latest announcement made by the federal government. So we are saying that, look here, I'm sorry, sir, this is uh, what uh, the government wants, you know, and you have to abide. Otherwise, uh, you will not be allowed entry. So this kind of uh, negate lah, any commotion lah, at the entrance. So um, uh, this is just now I did say about you know beside complying to uh, uh, the Ministry of Health SOP uh, safety protocol uh, health protocol uh, uh, you try to do something uh, more than that. Okay, you can always do something. Nobody's stopping you doing more than that. So uh, obviously here is like you know you can if you if you do let's say uh, as a as a uh, as uh, additional things you do you if you sanitize your proper your property uh, uh it can be property in the sense that it can be your coach uh, it can be your office it can be your your restaurant it can be uh, your your premise uh, uh two or three times a day nothing wrong for you to tell and put out a speak uh, put out a voice to say that hey look here we sanitize our one uh, every uh twice a day you know or three times a day. So uh, this is what we mean by uh, going a little bit beyond uh, what is required. Lah, huh? So here, uh, um, you, you put also a sign to tell people that, hey, even people are just entering, you said, oh, uh, we are really doing A, B, C, D, E. So people also like, oh, okay, well, these guys are quite, uh, quite um, proactive uh, in uh, you know, uh, uh, making, ensuring that uh, uh, their guests are safe, uh, uh, what they call that. Um, uh, safe lah. Huh? So, uh, like example, huh? uh, this type of uh, uh, policies where you you know you put boxes there and you make sure you implement. You know, because when when your guests actually come, uh, they will take picture. If if the guests uh, if all those guests are not inside the box or not standing at least uh, uh, in in within the the. Uh, the space between the box, uh, they will take picture and they will share. You know, nowadays social media, they share everything. Uh, you know? They say, oh, you look here, this place, uh, this venue, this operator uh, is not following SOP. Look at look at the people all over the place. So uh, this kind of thing, like I said, uh, as, a, as a service provider, it could be anything. If you have this and you can post it in your own social media for other people, uh, who are browsing around, looking around, and they see, I say that, oh, not too bad, uh, these guys are okay. They they walk the talk, uh, they don't just, uh, no, they really walk the talk. So these things are small, small things, uh, but this kind of, uh, if everybody start doing all these things, uh, uh, definitely it will, it, it will boost uh, uh, end users' confidence in, uh, in coming out. Uh, uh. So uh, uh, like pictures like this, okay, because counters are heavily, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, people touch the counter, so you do sanitizing. Uh, even even in door handles, you know, if you look at the picture, you realize that the the bar, the round bar, is like a little brownish color. You will notice a little brownish color. Actually, this uh, brownish color is not because it's uh, dirty or anything. This brownish color is actually a, a copper. It's, 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 it's a copper wrapping. Huh? It's a copper wrapping. Uh, we all know that copper uh, supposed to kill uh, uh, virus, you know. Uh, uh, so uh, 
this actually is a antivirus uh, sticker, you know, copper sticker. So uh, as an as an organization or uh, people who, who are aware of this product, you can actually buy this product. You put it on your your, your coach handle, for example. You, if you rent coaches, you know people have to hold the hold the bar to get up the coach. You know you can wrap it around. Or if you're a restaurant uh, where people need to uh, push the door or something, you can stick it on the door so that when people push the door, they are actually uh, touching on this uh, piece of uh, copper uh, copper sticker whatever you want to call it huh? so that oh you know you don't have to worry you know even you know anybody can so this these are what you, i'm saying was earlier on that you go beyond the sop okay government never insists that everybody must put copper you know uh, 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 copper wrappers around all the handles but i mean example uh, i'm sharing so uh even then, you know, even then, the the, the copper, uh, what do you call it, foil uh, uh, or wrapper is put around uh, as uh, extra precautionary. We still send uh, someone sanitize, and then shopping mall owners and developers, managers and industry specialists. Our guiding principles are based on professionalism, representation, education and training, networking and information sharing. PPK represents over 90% of the mall's commercial interest in Malaysia. To continue growing the industry, we seek to attract more international brands, franchises and foreign direct investments into Malaysia. This will not only create more employment opportunities, but it will grow our tourism industry and our domestic economy. To elevate the standard and levels of professionalism, some initiatives undertaken by PPK are namely regular conferences and seminars on the latest and current more trends, practices and insights, biannual training on marketing and leasing, research finance administration to operations ppk also engage regular dialogues within the more community and all stakeholders on current issue and legislation that impact the industry ppk promote continuous learning and develop talents to meet the increasing demand for more managers in all disciplines the certification courses in shopping mall management are held by annually. They started off with the uh, networking of inter members alone. Uh, the next, of course, is the networking with all the associates uh, in the industries. The next part is with the government agencies as well as all the, the ministries. And this is where we are able to understand uh, more on how the economy and the industry works and industry will, will grow forward too. The other part was, of course, the, the tours that we did. In this case, the tours to all the countries that we've gone to. And the last, of course, is the formation of uh, the Council of Asian Shopping Centre, uh, CASC, where we have to uh, form the association uh, with all the countries, in uh, most of the countries in Asia. And this is where we are able to network and learn from each other. The role of more managers has changed drastically. Engagement and affiliations are today's success factors for malls. To keep more professionals updated with the latest insight, PPK provides the right platform to learn from the best. At PPK, we understand the delivery of exceptional customer service is a strategic competitive advantage. As the retail world moves from functional to experiential shopping, Malaysian malls will continue to be at the forefront of this push. PPK's unique characteristic is the fact that PPK's membership covers 
all the malls in the country where they have a large number of members who speak with the same voice. PPK's role is actually to make sure the government understands how important the retail industry is to the country. Because retail is where people come here for shopping and they come for tourism. Mall in Malaysia are very vibrant, dynamic, contributing significantly to our economy. Our core directions include enhancing professionalism for all mall management personnel and our own going education and training program via seminars and conferences and study trips. Overseas will do exactly this. Today, shopping malls have evolved to become great city icons, landmarks and town centres, but still acting as a city square and meeting point for social interaction, shopping and entertainment. Rapid advancing technology developments and positive disruptions have seen the advent of e-retailing on cashless payments. Shopping centres have to evolve and adapt to serve the sophistication of the clientele and shoppers. Shopping malls today are no longer just bricks but have to embrace clicks to enhance the exciting synergy to ensure they survive and thrive. Guided by the principles of continuous education and interaction, the Malaysian Shopping Malls Association strives to make Malaysia an international shopping destination at par with some of the best in the world. Hi. Apologize to the technical difficulties. Uh, now, Mr. Steve, you can continue with your slides. Okay, so sorry, everyone. Uh, Murphy Law just applied. <laughs> um, okay, so coming back to where I get off. Yeah, this is uh, things that you're doing beyond, you know, beyond really, I'm saying beyond. So I just move on as we lost some time. Uh, even here on the leaf panels, you see, is you notice the tone is like a, a, a copper tone, huh? Uh, brownish light brown tone this is because again of the uh the the, the wrapper that we apply uh, the the antibacterial uh, wrapper that we apply uh, for leaf buttons because leaf buttons is something that everybody presses uh. 
um, uh, this is norm, okay, uh, putting a sanitizer right in front of the entrance. Uh, um, uh, uh, this is where uh, the things that you do more than the norm, you find that, you know, uh, we, this guy is carrying around a, certain, a sanitizer. So it's going around the whole lobby, you know, to sanitize the whole lobby. So these kind of things were just now earlier, I was saying that we do it two or three times a day. So we do it in the we do it uh, once in the morning after people check out. Uh, we do it at night again. So they actually every corner of the whole borough, uh, the lobby is very big, but we still carry this portable sanitizer to go around to sanitize uh, every corridors uh, that we have seat where uh, guests are sitting. Uh, those uh, uh, public sofas, you know, they are not spared. You know, so uh, sanitizing uh, is carried on. Um, uh, you can see here, uh, lift lobbies and everywhere. Uh, even these are vehicles that the hotel used to transfer uh, passengers. So we also make sure that uh, we sanitize uh, the vehicles every day, uh, all the seats and everything, because we are carrying different different passengers. Uh, uh, this is where I was saying that you know, those uh, uh, limo operators, coach operators, uh, they, they can do these things uh, uh, and then uh, put it, capture it on either visual, uh, visually or on video and post it on their website. Uh, to show that you know if you come to uh, use our facilities you are quite safe because you know uh, we do all these kind of uh, extras you know to ensure that our guests uh, 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 don't have to worry too much lah because we we go beyond the normal safety protocol uh, uh, like i said coaches are uh, those coaches again uh, you sanitize the coach whole coach you close all the door windows so you sanitize the whole thing you do it one two times a day or every time when there's a group uh, uh there's a different group coming uh, you do all these kind of things uh these are all restaurants uh, like beside the main entrance you have uh, all these things but uh in front of every outlet uh, uh, you can also do uh, have all these things uh, uh, um, especially if you are if you if you are a, 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 let's say if you are example a, a team park operator you no know, at the main entrance you scan then inside there you still have many other other kind of outlets uh, uh, you can still do uh, another scan you know so all these things are uh, to show uh, uh, all the outlets at night, uh, all the uh, counters that uh, uh, food uh, used to serve, you know. So uh, all these are proper sanitized. So even if uh, you're talking about um, uh, room service orders, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the vehicles that are used are also sanitized and the food are all covered and wrapped up uh, nicely. And the staff serving are all wearing gloves, uh, wearing masks and things like that. So these are the thing. Uh, this time was I saying that uh, putting all this. Uh, if you have function rooms, if you're having smaller events, you hold in a smaller function room, not in the ballroom. It does not matter. Still, you know, uh, a QR code is required. You know, providing sanitizing uh, facilities is required. Um, uh, this is what I mean by uh, entire ballroom uh, uh, being sanitized. You know, uh, even the rooms. Uh, rooms are concerned uh, once the bed are. Uh, set up, you know, the, the room is sanitized. Uh, all the vanity counters, you know, are also uh, are sanitized. Uh. Uh, these are all the vanity counters they used to wipe all the tabletop. Uh. And going beyond, this is what I mean again, uh, you know, it would be nice that, you know, even as a, as a service provider, if you're a coach operator, if you're, if you're a restaurant or if you are anything, a, any service provider, uh, uh, theme park or anything, that, you know, as part of the uh, entry gift, uh, uh, you you give uh, the, your guests, you know, a, a face mask. You give them a small bottle of sanitizer. Not required at all, really. But uh, like I said again, uh, it, it may become uh, the talk of the town. You no, know? if you give this to everybody, say, hey, you know, you go to that place, uh, they give you all these things. You know, uh, other places uh, they don't. But you know, this is it's a kind, it's a good gesture, uh, You know. So uh, uh, those uh, resort that uses a lot of buggies or the golf courses, you know, uh, you are considered a service provider, lah. Uh, or any, any, any maybe uh, bicycles or, 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 or rides that you have, uh, it's good to sanitize them, you know, after you know uh, at least a few times a day, lah. Uh, you sanitize them, uh, the handles, the seats, you know. Uh, these are bicycle on rental, you know. So after you know after one guest have uh, finished. Uh, and return their bike so they, they, you should sanitize all the handles the seats especially before you rent, rent the bicycle out to another person so um, this these are all very small but good gestures uh, which i think uh, if you do it and display it 
uh, it kind of boosts people's confidence to use your facilities uh, and come to use your services vis-a-vis -vis, uh, some other ones uh, who doesn't talk much about it. Uh. So, uh, <clears throat> so uh, coming to weddings nowadays, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> whether it's Western, Indian, Chinese, Malay wedding, it doesn't really matter. Nowadays, a lot uh, of trend also people, the younger ones especially, uh, uh, they like to do beach events. Uh. So, um, um, yeah, yeah, this is something that, you know, uh, as a service provider or as a wedding planner, you know, you can uh, promote a lot of uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, services. Uh, okay, and uh, because uh, it's open air, people feel it's safer, uh, you know, uh, because the, the sunshine and whatever will kill whatever bacteria, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, like I said again, uh, you, you see, uh, these are all very nice, uh, just running through some simple, these are all beach wedding. It's, it's becoming very, very popular. Everybody is, is uh, looking at this because, uh, um, like I said again, uh, ballroom, function rooms, uh, they need double the size, you know, because of the social distancing. Uh, uh, you, sometimes you have big numbers, but they cannot fit in into certain uh, venues because uh, the space is, is not uh, sufficient. But uh, beaches, uh, sometimes uh, you, you can fit in a lot. Uh, so, uh, I know it comes with many teams. Uh, even even team. Uh, these are all beach, you know, these are all beach. So, uh, just to show to you that, you know, uh, for events, uh, uh, not necessary to be in an uh, in, uh, in, uh, in enclosed place. Uh, um, and uh, if you have other options uh, to think about, so uh, do promote whatever you do. But even if you have it in an enclosed place, uh, you do the same thing like just now you do you know you have the temperature reader you provide the sanitizer qr code i think uh you practice the social distancing distance between table two meters uh, distance between uh the person sitting next to you is at least a meter uh, people uh, everybody need to wear masks you know uh, people still feel uh comfortable uh, uh, initially everything was very quiet but now i can see that you know uh, as time passes by you know uh, people are slowly, slowly accepting la, that I think the worst is over. Um, everything looks like coming back. Uh, and as as a, as a hotel operator, my, ourselves, uh, uh, I've seen there are many, many inquiries coming in. Uh, uh, many inquiries uh, for all those uh, who have postponed and postponed uh, all their events uh, uh, now are all coming back, you know. Um, Many of them are already having uh, some of them. The more, the more, the, the one who are more confident, you know, uh, having uh, their their events this year. Uh, but many also are asking for next year, lah, as they hope that over time uh, things will normalize back. Uh. So definitely, I uh, can see uh, the interest is there. Inquiries are coming in. Um, I can see even uh, hotels. Uh, most of my friends, resorts, you know. Uh, they are filled with uh, guests, you know, especially on weekends, you know, and they now have a challenge to also um, uh, meet all the guest demand. And of course, um, my advice sometimes also is, uh, you know, uh, due to the shortages of uh, manpower, uh, uh, because uh, many left the industry uh, when the market was closed for almost two years. Uh, don't, don't, don't extend what you uh, cannot deliver la, in the sense that, you know, if you are a hundred room hotel or a resort and, you know, you used to have a hundred staff to 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 a uh, hundred pair of hands to help to to upkeep the place. But due to uh, the last closure for almost uh, uh, one and three quarter years, uh, uh, maybe uh, you have 40 of your staff have left. Now you only have 60 staff. So if you have 60 staff, uh, it's quite uh, obvious that you will not be able to handle if a hundred of your rooms are occupied because you only have 60% capacity. So no matter how you overwork these 60 people, uh, you may be able to meet 80% uh, of the hundred and you will lose. The, uh, the, the other 20% will be, uh, you know, will experience very uh, bad service, you know. Uh, so, uh, of course, these things will go viral and everybody will start talking about your place or, or, or your services. And uh, this is going to be not so good. Uh. 
but if you uh, say that okay uh, let's not let's not be too greedy you know we have 60 staff okay maybe we can stress ourselves to handle 80 80 rooms uh, that's all we will sell 80 rooms although we have 100 rooms the other 20 rooms uh, you know uh, we we will only uh, open when we have uh, enlarged uh, back our staff force so this is something uh, very important uh, to uh, ensure confidence uh, of travelers um, uh, do not go beyond your means uh, of giving the uh, normal services that you are supposed or expected to give to your paying guests uh, because uh, that's one sure way to uh, to uh, gain their mistrust uh, that uh, that uh, it's better not to go anywhere now because you know why service is going to be terrible everything's going to be terrible so um, do what you can stick to what you can and uh okay talking about okay traveling uh, traveling same things you know traveling uh, many people are traveling now uh, you can see many uh, resorts uh, are packed with people uh, you try to get a room you can't even get a room you know so um in terms of uh, you know planning for one's uh, um, trip uh, for uh, to to maintain uh, eternal uh, romance uh, you have to be very careful okay uh, of course malaysia is is a is a heaven place for holidays you know uh, we eat for islands we eat for beaches you're looking for highlands nature city you know uh, just um, all the service providers uh, agency that uh, uh, if you are uh, even a travel agency promoting a lot of uh, honeymoon packages or anniversary packages uh, do ensure you do your homework uh, do ensure you do your homework uh, to partner with uh, with uh, the, the the service provider to ensure that your guests are uh, you are you are you're confident that they will uh, be operating uh, uh, in full compliance with uh, the ministry of health uh, sops and you know so that you ensure that your guests have a truly uh, and, and can save uh, uh, holidays. Uh. Of course, uh, you, first of all, you need to know your clients, uh, what their likes are la, before you start promoting. La. Uh, so all these things uh, about uh, coming, whether whichever place you go, uh, it, it is not the matter of the place, but uh, how the service is uh, extended end of the day la. and uh, it's truly truly important to ensure that uh, uh, fully full compliance at least uh, uh, at this stage uh, uh, of the uh, many many uh, SOPs drawn up by our Ministry of Health uh, is complied with la. although Malaysia always like to take shortcut la, uh, but uh, definitely uh, this is not the time to do it so that you we can all together those service provider ensure that you know customers uh, have full confidence to come out in full force uh, to uh, continue with their events uh, uh, long postponed uh, events or, or honeymoon trips or anniversary trips uh, uh, and have a peace of mind that uh, they will feel safe and uh, truly uh, have uh, a fantastic time so of course like i said again uh, first of all uh, you want to build confidence you need to know your customer likes uh. don't propose something that is not what they like uh. even the place uh, uh, have the best uh, safety protocol so you have to ensure that you know you recommend things that they like uh. and then after which after which you pitch uh, why why they should be coming to you and not to somebody else uh, this is where I was sharing earlier on. Uh, try, try to sh share with them that you know all. Beyond those compliance, the extras that you are doing, you know, um, of course, I, I'm looking at. Uh, don't forget the normal things, uh, uh, all those uh, uh, romantic dining packages that uh, that are out there. So uh, even like I said spa packages don't just say oh this 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 uh, package or that package but also share with the client that you know why you are recommending them this package because of 
all the SOPs that the spa operator is uh, uh, implementing, uh, whether it be uh, their staff uh, uh, have, have to go through daily uh, scanning, uh, screening, health screening, uh, all how they, how they um, sanitize the spa rooms, uh, uh, the, if they're using jacuzzi, how they sanitize the jacuzzi, you know, uh, how, how they um, sanitize all the facilities uh, that they are in the spa so that, you know, uh, the minute they walk in to this particular spa, you know, uh, they can already feel safe that even though uh, many people have come in, but uh, it's clean, it's safe, you know. So sharing all this safety protocol is uh, very important. Whoever is your partner uh, in service, uh, uh, you have to study and ask what they do so that when you are selling, uh, you explain everything to your client. So this definitely uh, will boost their confidence uh, in using your service, which I think is the most important. Uh, now, sometimes it's not so much about just the price, you know. It's not just about the service, uh, not just about the price, the good service, about even now they extended one more thing is that, you know, um, all the places, all the things that you're recommending to me, uh, have you taken into consideration the part on, uh, you know, uh, this uh, fear of the COVID-19, you know, uh, is, is causing, you know, uh, which is the uh, health protocol that, uh, that the facility provider is also uh, complying with. Uh, you know, uh, do you bother to check and ensure you, know, you, know, you are just part of the sales uh, channel? Uh, same thing, it goes to, like I said again, uh, whether you're selling exciting activities, snorkeling, diving, jet skiing, nature walk, yachting, uh, you, 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 those who are promoting, uh, never forget to share with your prospective client again how, uh, what is your safety protocol in terms of the equipments that are going to be used, you know, and uh, like I said, if you're yacht, you know, how do you maintain your yacht and things like that. So, yep, I guess uh, that's uh, very much uh, sum, up, sum up all that I want to say and uh, Thank you very much. Uh, um, uh, I am here to open to any questions that uh, uh, anyone would like to ask. You know, uh, I will try my level best <laughs> to answer you. And uh, okay, welcome. Okay, thank you for the informative and interesting talk, Mr. Steve. Mm, so here is a questions. Yes. With the interstate border opening, what is the current status of hotel occupancy? Okay, uh, uh, like I said again, um, many hotels, uh, many hotels, uh, I, 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 I share with that, that uh, nationwide, nationwide, uh, I'm very sure, I think almost all hotels uh, are facing a, a, a major challenge in getting uh, manpower to uh, provide their normal services. Uh. So um, many, I would say, depending on their owners, uh, operators, how, how, what is the maximum capacity based on the strength that they have, uh, uh, they can uh, efficiently, uh, efficiently uh, meet safety protocol as well as uh, meet customer expectation. Uh, so I would say that most hotel would try maybe like I said, it all depends on the staff force uh. if they have a uh, 60 uh, percent of the staff force the usual normal staff force uh, maybe they can uh, they can extend another 10 or 20 percent you know of their capacity uh. so uh putting hypothetical of a figure if you have 100 rooms if you have 100 staff under normal circumstances now if you have only 60 staff working because Forty staff were lost uh, when when the market closed for the last uh, one and three quarter years. So, you depending on how you can uh, maximize the uh, maximize the manpower that the, the sixty men people that you have, you may want to operate maybe either uh, maintain a sixty percent of your room inventory. That means you only sell sixty room, or you say that I can stretch my people a bit, maybe to seventy percent, or maybe maximum I stretch my people will be eighty percent. So you may want to open only at 80%. So um, I 
many hotels are operating at different level. Nobody is operating at 100% of the capacity. Uh, what, to put it in short. Lah. So I can say it should be anything between, uh, probably depending on the manpower, anything between uh, 50 to 50 to 70, 50 to 70 percent, most hotels will be operating around that range. Lah. Unless you, of course, if you if you manage to get all the manpower you want, you can open 100 percent. That, that's fine, you see? But even then, uh, people tend to travel more towards the uh, weekends, the weekdays, no matter what, uh, 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 they will be a bit lower. So definitely, I would say lah, hotels should be ranging anything between uh, 50 to 70 percent. But of course, city hotels are uh, a bit different. Uh. It depends whether you are a resort hotel, city hotel. City hotel is more on uh, doing businessmen. Uh, they, they have a lot of corporate accounts, uh, corporate businesses. As we know now, many corporates are also still not open. Uh. They're still working from home and things like that. So those hotels who are in the city, who is very much dependent on uh, the corporate uh, market, uh, they may have a much lower uh, occupancy. La. They may be running somewhere in the, I will put there, maybe they be running somewhere in the 40 to 60, you know, 40 to 60. They, they'll be slightly lower because uh, the corporate business is, is not there at all. At, at this point in time, la, at this point in time. All right. Thank you for answering the questions, Mr. Sasif. Shortly before the end of the season, uh, Mr. Sif, what the final piece of advice you would like to give to the audience? Okay, uh, I guess there's two aspects. Uh, one is whether you are you are a provider of the service or the other one, uh, you are the user of the service. So, uh, you know, if, if you are a user of the service, uh, obviously, uh, before you decide anything, you want to study. La, uh, of course, you can study, you can Google. I mean, nowadays, social media is so powerful. You can find a lot uh, more information about the place that you or, or, or the service that you want to use. So if you, uh, uh, after doing your research, you feel that, okay, these guys are not bad, you know, because they do this, they do that, and, you know, looks like they are good, you know, then you, 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 you follow your heart la, to use them. If you are a service provider, on the other on the other hand, uh, depending when you as a ser uh, service provider, whether you provide the end product or not. Uh, what do I mean by if you provide the end product? For example, if you are a restaurant operator, so that means you are providing the end product. People come into your shop. That is your shop. You know they're going to eat in your shop. So you know the safety protocol uh, uh, to enter. So you give the notices, you make sure your staff clean the table, sanitize them whenever possible. You make sure your chef, they are fully uh, masked, you know, they, they, you do temperature reading for them, all your staff, all your counter, tabletops, your chairs, you know. So you do those things because you are the, you, you provide it yourself, you see, because you are the one. But let's say, yeah, or if you are a hotel, then you, 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 you have full control of what's inside your hotel. So you make sure that uh, all those are uh, uh, some of the things that I've shown, you, you carry them out. But if you are only an agent, okay, what I mean by an agent, that means you sell people other product, okay? That means uh, you, 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 promote, uh, you promote venues for wedding. That means you are wedding plan. You, you don't actually, that's not your, your product. You only provide it, okay? Or you recommend people to dine in this restaurant when you do a packaging package or something like that. Okay, it includes all meals. So you will have your dinner here, you have a lunch here, uh, you go site visit, you go, uh, you go to, you have a site visit here, or, uh, and then, uh, then you, you stay in this hotel. Then if you are, if you are only an agent to, to the final product which you sell as a package, then uh, you should do your homework. Uh, uh, you should check who, who are my partners. What kind of safety protocol do they, they, they carry out, you know? The restaurant, what do they practice? Uh, the, the place of interest, you know, uh, do they have a safety protocol? What do they practice? The hotel that I'm going to use, what kind of safety protocol they, they, they uh, exercise, they carry out? And then when you package it up, then, you know, you kind of like, uh, you are you're confident uh, that you have really taken care of the interest of your customer. 
And this customer, of course, uh, if you are doing that, then you will share with your customer. Like, oh, hey, look here, you know, hey, this is my partner, like that, like that. Now I explain, uh, I go and check them out. Oh, this one, this one. So you are assured like, when you buy a package from me, uh, uh, you don't have to worry uh, whether I'm going to the right restaurant, whether I'm going to the right hotel. So these things uh, will be something to, uh, I said, to enhance yourself, uh, to boost the confidence uh, when you selling the product and your consumer who is buying the product. So this is uh, uh, this I I would uh, I would uh, encourage lah. Uh, if you are the service provider side, please do all these things. But if you are information, so you can run. So uh, right. that that will be kind of my uh, final thoughts uh, to share with uh, everyone that's here. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Steve, for giving us an interesting topic. Again, thank you for your time, your content, and your sharing. Okay. Most welcome. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Mr. Steve.